Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar discussing how to expand your testing capabilities with piggybacking. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Nick Erickson, your host for this webinar. That means I'll be on the back end for the most part, available to assist in case you have any technical issues. Um, I'm joined by JJ Blankhorn, one of our applications engineers at Instron. JJ works with our high force universal testing systems. These are our larger floor model testing systems with force capacities ranging from 100 to 2000 kilonewtons. In many cases, these are systems that have very large, heavy grips, fixtures, or, and load cells that aren't always the easiest or most convenient to swap out. That's where this concept of piggybacking comes into play uh, in, some case, in some cases, uh, which is what JJ is here to discuss. Uh, we expect the presentation should take around 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll open it up for questions at the end. That being said, we do encourage you to submit questions throughout the webinar so we can get those queued up for JJ uh, while he's presenting. So you'll just wanna use the Q&A panel when you submit those questions. And then there's also a chat panel, which you can use if you have just general questions about like you're having a technical issue and you wanna want connect with me. Um, so with that said, I'll turn things over to JJ to get us started. Thanks for the introduction, Nick. Hey everybody, my name is JJ Blankhorn. I'm one of Instron's applications engineers here in Norwood, Massachusetts. And today I'm really excited to be presenting this webinar to you on how to expand your testing capabilities with piggybacking. So here's a look at the topics we're going to cover in this webinar. Uh, we're gonna look at what piggybacking is. Also, we're gonna highlight some of the challenges that you may face in your lab so that you may consider piggybacking when thinking about your testing needs. Uh, we'll take a closer look at how we can achieve this and the components needed to build your piggyback load string. And then before we wrap things up, we'll take a look at some of the benefits of choosing a piggyback solution and whether or not it's right for you. And uh, with that, we'll get started. So what is piggybacking? So in order to explain what piggybacking is, it's important to discuss some of the challenges that uh, piggybacking might be able to solve for you. You may not even be aware of some of these challenges or that there may be an opportunity to improve your testing lab. In the image you see here, I'm, I'm showing a few Instron systems. Now, if you're testing plastics, you may be familiar with our table model systems that you see in the middle, or maybe you're testing metals and have one of our high force floor model systems on the left. Uh, now I'm showing you this visual, almost as if you're kind of looking at what options you can choose from. For example, if most of your testing is plastics or thin sheet metal, uh, you may be inclined to look primarily at uh, our table model system in the middle here. Uh, but maybe you're testing composites or your metals are, are getting borderline on the edge of a table model's load rating, in which case, you're presented with whether you need to upsize your, your tester. Um, as material trends are evolving really rapidly and technology is improving, we're seeing stronger and stronger material being used in the industry. Uh, vehicles, aerospace, renewable energy are just some examples of industries that are focusing a lot of efforts trying to make um, extremely strong material and at the same time reduce the weight and cost associated with them. So the challenge that presents to us is that, uh, well, maybe now do I need to be considering a floor model system or do I need to consider multiple systems? Um, some labs will tend to specialize a system per material type uh, as a solution to this type of question. So when you're faced with challenges like these, like what system to buy or um, wanting to ensure that you have the versatility to test all your materials with strong data integrity uh, deciding if multiple systems are in your budget, or if um, maybe you don't want to take off these really heavy grips all the time, uh, but you still need to test smaller materials like thin metals or plastics. If you're asking yourself these questions, uh, you may be a good candidate for a, a piggyback solution, uh, which brings us to what is piggybacking. Um, piggybacking is a term that we use for allowing a smaller capacity item or items to mount off of a larger one. Um, this can be grips, load cells, uh, bend fixture, compression platens, or any other fixture you might otherwise test on your system. So basically, if, if you need to step down, piggybacking can do it. 
Um, so before I get into the next slide, I just wanted to show these two images um, so you can get a full grasp of the scope of these two grips here. Um, on the left side, these grips in retrospect to this operator are fairly large. Um, and because these are so heavy, removing them isn't really an option. Uh, on the right, however, you can see how small these grips are. And uh, some of them uh, are even smaller than the ones you see here. Um, but ultimately, they're super lightweight, easy to interchange uh, in a matter of seconds. So um, I showed you that image there of those two grips so that you can get an idea of the grip size before I asked this question. And I wanted to ask this very open-ended question uh, primarily to make sure our comments and questions are coming in properly, uh, but also to put piggybacking into perspective a little bit. Uh, on the left is the heavy hydraulic wedge grip that we just saw, which would be permanently fixed to your system. And on the right, we have the same smaller grip that you saw, uh, which is actually gripping on fiber specimen, which is enclosed in this paper holder. The specimen is actually about the size of a human hair, and you can't actually see it in this image. So I've added a line there so you can kind of see what, like just how small the specimen is and how micro this test, this testing gets. Uh, which brings us to the question that I wanted to ask is, uh, would you test this fiber specimen on these big mats of grips? Uh, so uh, we'll wait a moment. Uh, feel free to pop up just a yes or a no in the comments for the questions. Uh, we just want to make sure we're working properly on our end before we move on. And uh, all right, so it looks like we're getting some, some yeses and nos. And um, so I think we're good. We can go ahead and move forward. Okay, so the, uh, the answer to this question and what Instron would certainly advise is no. Uh, this large grip is not the appropriate solution for your test. And we would recommend a better one. Uh, we, would, we would end up recommending a smaller capacity grip, more suited to the specimen like the ones you see here in the image. Um, however, if you ask yourself this question from a different perspective, or more precisely, can our system test this? In which case we would say, yes, that it can. Uh, but before we answered that, we asked it to ourselves internally to see if we can confidently tell you that it can. And what we concluded is that this is definitely a yes. Um, and you can see uh, on the left here, we were able to piggyback a very small capacity load cell and grips to the larger set um, that you saw before. Uh, so up in the top left, we have the large grips, which is uh, where we started from. We then connect to an interface through the means of an adapter, and then connect directly a load cell appropriate for the testing needs. And finally, a, uh, a set of grips to ensure that we're achieving the best possible results. Now, the, uh, the results on the right are pretty clear, are a pretty clear indication that our systems can be equipped to handle this really vast range of testing. Um, now, this is certainly a, an extreme example. Uh, it's unlikely that you would have a range of specimens this, this vast, um, or that it would lead you to a solution like this. Um, but we do feel this is a great visual representation of, of just how versatile you can get um, and make our systems through piggybacking. So we've looked now at what piggybacking is, and also we've seen a good visual of it. Uh, but now let's take a look at how you may be able to piggyback the system and the components that it takes to get there. So now if we break down that intense load string from before, uh, I'll show you how we can achieve this uh, with only a few pieces of added equipment. Um, believe it or not, we were able to create that load string with only two parts, not including the, the load cell or the grip, which are pretty standard options. Our first example is the wedge adapter. Uh, this was essentially a, a block of metal. It's called the wedge adapter, and it acts as a, a filler to the grip. And then once this block is slid into its place, we can connect the desired connection type, which will open up a wide range of other fixture possibilities. And uh, the next piece of equipment is the piggyback adapter. Uh, this piece is inserted into that wedge adapter we saw before, and it features a load cell connection type. 
uh, which is configured for the appropriate test. In the image here, it's a one kilonewton load cell. Uh, the previous one was a 500 newton load cell. So uh, pretty open to whatever you need in terms of uh, measurement. So while those load strings maybe looked a little intimidating or that it required custom work or custom fixtures, it's really only two simple components that can be outfitted in your system in less than 15 minutes. Here are some other common examples of load strings where customers may want to test or be able to test different applications on one device. Uh, it's important to remember that not every grip or frame accessory can be piggybacked the same way, but that it can be piggybacked nonetheless. The concept, uh, which you see a little bit in these images, apply to all of our unidirectional tests, such as tension, compression, flex, and others. On the left, we have some tension grips equipped for compression. In the middle, we have uh, devices for testing button head and bolts. And then on the right, we have some tension to smaller tension. An example uh, on the right, maybe uh, for an application that requires smaller jaw faces or maybe specimens that require a smaller amount of gripping pressure. So we'll take a look at some of the benefits that you may consider for whether piggybacking is the best option for you. So while, while technology on Instron load cells are certainly leading edge, it's, uh, it's important to know your limitations as well. Instron load cells can measure down accurately to one one thousand of the capacity of your device, which is a very big range. Uh, but for some tests, it's it certainly makes sense to maybe want to step down a level or two and ensure that your readings are as precise as you need them to be. So the concept of piggybacking is also very common on the O4 systems as well. Now, if you test plastics or elastomers and are familiar with our table model systems, you may be asking yourself, well, why would I want a piggybacked equipment? Can I not just swap the load cell? This is a, certainly a valid question to ask. And uh, the answer is sure, you, you can absolutely do this. Uh, a lot of our systems are, are very capable of just swapping out the load cell. But the reason you may want to consider it is due to standards and verification checks. Uh, as a general rule, if you install a new load measurement device, it should go through the, the calibration and verification checks that would normally go performed on an annual basis. Uh, this helps ensure data integrity, uh, also that there was no damage to the load cell device. It can also just be a lot quicker and easier to pop in a, an adapter and not have to worry about installing and recalibrating load cells multiple times. But to summarize, um, piggyback solutions still hold value for low to mid-tier mid four systems as well. So before we wrap things up for this session, I just wanted to say that piggybacked hardware can be suitable for any application that might need it. It may not be the only solution, but having that option there and the ability to make your system more versatile can go a long way when discussing your lab needs. Uh, maybe it was decided that multiple machines wasn't necessary or that there wasn't enough lab space or, or even if it didn't make sense to have a dedicated device for each specimen to type. And instead you just want one system that can do it all. Uh, so this slide is just a visual representation of reducing the desire to have a dedic uh, reducing the desire to have multiple systems for each specimen type and show that one system can include the ranges of all the systems uh, that you saw. And also as an added bonus, it can reduce your lab space if that's uh, a challenge for you. So before we go, um, I just wanted to highlight in bullet point some of the specific challenges that piggybacking may provide a solution to. And maybe it will be something that you remember down the road if this ever comes up. Some of these can be, do you need to future proof your lab in case specimens get stronger? Um, but you also want the insurance for continuing testing on the smaller scale as well. Maybe you're performing different test applications like tension, compression, or flex, and you don't need multiple systems for that. Uh, also ensuring you have accurate data, even on your low force systems. Uh, maximizing your lab space, certainly, uh, a challenge some people face. 
or even if you want to reduce calibration and service costs. Uh, the less machines you have, the less calibration and less machines you have to service. So thank you all for listening to this webinar. Um, with that, we have some time for some questions. Um, and we'll just go over those. So one question, can load cells on higher capacity systems be interchanged? The answer is yes. Some of our systems do have the capability to just um, mount a different load cell directly to the crosshead. Uh, systems 100 kilonewtons and less have this capability. Um, with some added equipment if necessary. So the answer is yes, sometimes, and sometimes it, it's not able to be removed, in which case piggybacking would uh, be a device you would need to consider. Next question. Um, would you always recommend a higher capacity system due to the capabilities? Uh, the answer to this is no, not necessarily. Our first, um, our first course of action would be to recommend the most appropriate solution for you. So if you didn't have a, a large range of specimens, um, it would be more appropriate to just provide the one solution um, to cover those needs. Um, so if you do have a wide range of specimen, you want to future-proof yourself, certainly something we would consider recommending for you. My next question, how to choose the best testing machine covering all types, size, different shapes, and material for tensile testing. So the, the real thing that you wanna look at here is do you have enough capacity for your, your different specimens and shapes? If you have, uh, if your system is equipped to reach your max capacity, you'll have the ability to go down, um, but you wouldn't have the capacity to go up. So if you do have that large range, I would, uh, we would recommend having enough capacity and then providing the equipment to get uh, what you need, whether that's compression plans, tens uh, tensile grips or flex fixtures. Next question. One of your slides mentioned that piggybacking uh, is a cheaper could be a cheaper solution. Uh, can you explain that? Um, so what we mean by uh, potentially cheaper is that um, if you're considering buying multiple systems to reach that range, uh, buying those two pieces of equipment or however many is required to piggyback can certainly be cheaper than a whole system on its own. What is the smallest accessory you can piggyback? So that uh, load string that we showed you earlier, um, that was going from a really high four down to actually one of our smallest offerings for tensile grips. So the, the answer to this question is, um, there really isn't a limit to what grips we offer that can't be piggybacked. Uh, something to maybe consider though before uh, that's a definite answer is whether or not you have the necessary travel. Uh, generally, the more and more you piggyback, uh, you lose a little bit of test space. But the answer is uh, there really isn't a, a smallest accessory. Next question, is my accuracy reduced when I piggyback? So no, um, one of the purpose of piggybacking is actually to improve your accuracy on smaller levels. Uh, load cells, as, as we mentioned, what our instrument load cells are capable of measuring uh, one one thousandth of your device. So if you need to go lower than that, then piggybacking is uh, the solution for that. So piggybacking uh, improves your load measurement if that's what you, you need. Uh, is a full factory calibration every time a full factory calibration every time you change load cells? This is dependent um, potentially on your standards that you're following. Um, the general rule is uh, yes, if you change your load cells, you would want to get um, calibration. Uh, depending on the software you're using, there we have soft calibrations uh, equipped. Uh, so the answer is sometimes. And with that, it looks like um, we're out of the questions that we want to address for today. Uh, I'll go ahead and pass this off to Nick and thank you very much. All right, thanks JJ. Before I wrap things up, I just have two quick notes to make. Uh, first, for those questions not addressed live today, we'll be sure to follow up with those individuals by email. Uh, second, we will also be emailing each of you a copy of today's recording along with the slide deck. 
And with that said, I just want to say thanks again for JJ uh, uh, to JJ for presenting today. And thanks to all of you for attending. We really appreciate you joining us. Stay healthy, everyone. We hope to see you again next time.